representing a community which is largely arable, it is remarkable how much waste land there is. And one of the benefits which is available is to bring that wasteland into productive use, either as for you know um, wood, uh, you know low, low low cost crops and that sort of stuff. So there's a, a second economic benefit. Uh, no, I think you'll find if you go talk to your local farmers, there's uh, you know there's, there's there's quite a lot of little parcels around that they they can't grow wheat and this and that the other on, and you can grow energy crops. I'm just wondering, I I I can't see any problems particularly or um, in how uh, community energy projects sit together with with with. Um, major investment in renewables from multinational companies. Um, but I would like your view on that. Just interested in the um, role of parish groups and communities to um, showcase and give a high profile to renewable energy where they're rejecting what they perceive to be more damaging projects. Just thinking of the Balkan example that um, was just given which I'm familiar with in my former role, um, and whether there are any other projects that you know of that work in that way, where they are rejecting another kind of energy that they consider to be damaging to the countryside. I think that's a potentially really positive um, reason for embracing you know, some of these community energy projects, is to show that you're behind perhaps what you consider to be less damaging energy projects, as opposed to you know, other projects <laughs> like fracking or wind farms. I, I don't know of another example, uh, you know, I know, I know of Balcom, obviously, that, that got quite a lot of national um, uh, press and, and, and coverage. Um, so I'm afraid I don't know uh, of one other than Balcom. But, uh, I, you know, I should have mentioned, you know, while, while we've got a community energy strategy and community projects are led by communities, I think local authorities um, and housing associations and landowners play a really important role in helping, uh, in helping develop these projects, really. Um, you know, there's a low carbon hub, which is in Oxford and Oxford City Council have supported uh, their development in, in terms of financing. Um, you know, so they, local authorities play quite a, you know, a catalyst role, an enabler role uh, for, for communities. And I think a lot of uh, communities work with their local authorities and it's that collaborative partnership that really makes, makes projects happen. Uh, my own uh, experience of working in, in, you know, in an inner city environment like, like London in Brixton, we, we had quite a lot of support from Lambeth Council and now with Hackney Council. So that, that partnership is really important. Um, and our schemes were actually <laughs> developed with uh, keeping in mind, you know, some of the shared objectives that the local authority had and, and so did the community. You know, we've got, we've got a shared, um, uh, you know, idea of what local benefits are. And so, you know, it's about coming together. So there's a lot of skills and partnerships that can happen. We can have a more collaborative uh, approach. I'd like to pick up the question that you made around, you know, where does community energy sector sit alongside these big uh, energy companies? Um, I, I think we shouldn't be looking at it as a them and us kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people with a lot of skills in these big uh, corporations um, doing their job because that's the way the energy system is. What we should be doing is looking at ways in which we can reform the market so that we can see more of community um, engagement, involvement and a more decentralised uh, energy marketplace where you know it's more affordable and competitive and fair the prices to the local consumer and i think at the moment the way the system works penalizes renewable energy uh, for its intermittent supply and we should be surely today with this you know with advanced technology and ways of smart metering and and, and managing that we should be able to kind of uh, manage that uh, intermittent supply because at the moment you know you've got your demand that way and you've probably got the supply that going that way we should be able to reduce that and there's quite a lot of work happening across the sector with it with new independent uh, energy suppliers looking at bringing new innovative ways to make that happen so Ofgem have just recently um, you know they launched their um, a white paper discussion on non-traditional business models. This is really looking at disrupting the market and, uh, and that's some of the you know, responses that have come through uh, and often will be publishing their, their paper very, very, very soon, I think over the 
they're going to consider the responses that they've had. They've had around 60 odd uh, responses to that piece, uh, and, and they'll be submitting their response later uh, at the end of the summer. So I think that's one to watch, really. Shall I pick up just on the, the slightly different perspectives on, on, on that table? I think to me that just says, well, there's, there's no one, one approach for community energy, that it, it depends on the location. In, in some places, there, there may be issues with kind of, you know, lack of, lack of land. In other places, there may be um, an excess and, and opportunities. So I think it's just, you know, figuring out a project that will, will best fit um, that, that particular place. Um, and then on the, on the kind of uh, community energy as a replacement for more damaging, um, may, maybe commercially led projects. I mean, yeah, but Balkham is the one that got the media headlines. I don't doubt there are other examples that maybe didn't, didn't, didn't get in the media, um, but it strikes me that maybe there's a role, you know, for, for those, you know, whether it's CPRE or Community Energy England, of, you know, being aware of other examples that we, we, we can promote that maybe haven't hit the media headlines, but teach us kind of valuable, valuable things.